Um, first and foremost, I'm going to start off with this. We went to eat. We was eating. Man, it came to... By the way, so this is the this is the uh, confession tape. I'm gonna give you a real quick update. So, um, remember KVD is now arrested. Um, he had did an interview like you know years back, where essentially it was a proffer. He didn't know people were recording, but they were. He told a U.S. attorney and some detectives what the fuck happened with the Tupac death. He didn't think people were recording. He thought it was only going to be for information sakes and that they had got him for, like, drug dealing. He thought they were going to drop the drug the, the drug charge, and after he did the proffer and told truthfully about what happened, they were going to let him go. They did let him go. They did drop the drug char charges. However, obviously Tupac is just a huge, like, phenomenon. They did secretly record Keefe D. So apparently they recorded him. And um, he didn't know. So this audio came out later on. And this is one of the things that, you know, has kind of came out through the detective who retired his book. And like, you know, the transcript of this. And obviously the interview came out afterwards. And what's kind of also, you know, used to cross-reference the interviews that he did. So let me play this real quick. Give me two seconds until I get YouTube back online. Chris Carroll, happy to have you on the platform, my man. Well, you know, it's good to be here again. Oh, I mean, it's a pleasure to have you on the platform, my guy. But for the people that don't know you, introduce yourself to the people. Uh, Chris Carroll, I'm a retired lieutenant from Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I was a police officer for 25 years and uh, now retired. Um, if you, you know, for those of you that haven't seen me before, I was, uh, I was the last one to talk to Tupac Shakur uh, on the night that he was murdered. Uh, I held him as he spoke his last words. Uh, I was the first guy on the scene. And, uh, you know, I've been talking about this for a, a couple of years now. So, uh, you know, I don't know how much uh, detail you want out of the story, but I know we've been through it before. But uh, that's, that's that's kind of the basics of it. So I got to ask you, man, Keefe D, man, news broke yesterday that he got arrested for Tupac murder. How you feel about that? Uh, you know, I feel good about it because, you know, I, I thought something might happen because I was aware that there was a grand jury uh, that was assembled. And I and I was I, I'm not allowed to say that when I knew that. So it was kind of one of the few times I just had no comment on anything. I was like, I don't know nothing about no grand jury. But uh, so I knew I knew the ball was rolling. So it, it wasn't a complete surprise to me uh, that he was arrested. I knew something was going to happen. Uh, I didn't know when it was going to happen. Uh, it caught me off guard. I wasn't aware of it until, uh, you know, I was at home and <laughs> with a dead cell phone. So I wasn't even aware of it until it was a couple hours old. And, uh, you know, that I, I plugged my phone in and I'm, you know, I got like 60 texts to me, you know, with everybody lighting me up. So, um, I tell you, I'm, I'm glad that it's happening. It, it's, uh, All right, but this guy is, has been, okay. sorry. Okay, cool. All right. Um, I just have to get everybody back online. I'm sorry. Oxid was hitting angle holds you. Um, I was trying to play that audio for a second because it was going to explain a few things I was wondering about. So um, I'm kind of going down a little bit of a conspiracy theory realm here, but I do want people who probably know this case a little bit, like either know this case well or, or may have just followed random details to kind of put me on to like what the fuck is going on. So... The big question I do have is this, right? So uh, I can't play that video again. Let me just go back. I can't play it, but I could go to a still. No, this is the one that I can't play this, but I could go to here, right? Right here. Okay, cool. So this is this infamous, like, so this is this, like, white Cadillac or whatever. This is the infamous position of everybody in the car. At the time that Keefe D did the interview where he basically is just telling and giving it up, Orlando Anderson's dead, right? Um, from what I'm hearing, and this is where I guess my questions come in, like I know Orlando Anderson, Baby Lane is dead, who was, you know, Keefe D said was a shooter. Was DeAndre Dre Smith dead as well? Or Terrence T. Brown, uh, T. Brown? was he dead? I think, I think... 
So I think Baby Lane was dead and this guy was dead. Was was Dre dead? So that's my question. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm asking that question. Oh, somebody said the driver died in 2018. Really? Okay, let me, let me do a little Google search here. So, let me see. The Andre Dre Smith. Okay, here we go. So DeAndre Dre Smith, a Marine from like murder rap inside the Biggie and Tupac murders. It says 12 years ago, DeAndre Dre Smith, a.k.a. Big Andre, died from health related issues. And he's alleged to have been the shooter in the car or whatever. Hmm. 12 years today. And if this was written in 2016, 12 years would have been 2004, right? The driver died in 2018. So let's go back to that. So if we go back here, driver dies in 2018. He's alive. He dies. I got to figure out the time he dies, but it doesn't matter. Like, again, his death date doesn't matter. The only the only reason why I'm saying this all matters, and this was my thought about the whole thing, right? Let me Google one thing. When did um when did when did oh here we go. Okay. Mm. Give me one second. Okay, let me put my let me put my cards on on the table of what I'm thinking, right? So this guy dies way later, right? I'm wondering because apparently this is what grand the grand jury is coming back to say. And this by the way, I think this is why um this is why I think Keefe D is probably gonna help beat it because what his statements were, even in the proffer, even though that's not being used, but even in his subsequent interviews, he's always said that Orlando Anderson's a shooter. But according to an affiliate of the Southside Crips, right, they claim that and, and other people as well, any eyewitnesses, they claim that the hand that, that reached out the, the window with the gun was a hand of a more larger individual, which would match DeAndre Dre Smith, who was supposedly a guy well over six foot and a guy maybe even over 300 pounds. OK, so if you saw a larger forearm or hand reach out the window with the gun, it would have been him now. This is where like my little conspiracy theories brain is trying to like try to figure out and see if there was maybe an angle here. KVD took a proffer and when he took a proffer and, and we could go back to I think I have the date of the proffer somewhere. I just Googled it. I think it was 2009. Let me see. Um, I think it's 2009, right? I think it's 2009. Hold on. Or was it 2009? Yeah, 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 it's 2009. So the proffer happened, right? The proffer happened in 2009. Caden said to get Keefe D to uh, provide more information to the police about the shooting of Tupac, they made a proffer in 2009, right? So in 2009, who's still alive? I'm, I'm wondering if this guy's still alive because here's the thing. There's witnesses that are saying this guy did the killing, but Keefe D, who takes a proffer in 2009, which a part of the proffer is you have to tell the truth. If you lie in the proffer and knowingly lie, right? The proffer is non-existent. And also the proffer and things you've said in the proffer could be used against you. Now, 
he says in the proffer, and I can't play that clip again because that's the reason why YouTube went offline. He says in the proffer that he says in the proffer that um, Orlando Anderson took the gun, leaned over the fat guy, put his hand out of the window, and shot Tupac. Right. However, there is other witnesses who believe it wasn't Orlando Anderson. They believe it's the guy who was actually on the left, which is Big Dre. And they said the hand that was outside the window is, is a larger hand, which leaves a possibility that maybe Keefe D, either by mistake or knowingly, lies. Did he lie that his nephew, who was well deceased at the time, his nephew, remember his nephew got killed, Orlando Anderson, got killed in, in, in a unrelated um, but gang-related um, incident. Did he lie that his cousin, or not his cousin, his nephew did the killing as so to not, basically to have his cake and eat it too? The proffer was going to lead to his drug charge being dropped. But also the proffer could have led to other people being indicted. Him saying in the proffer, the guy that did the killing is dead, who was going to get indicted, right? So did he lie about Orlando Anderson doing the killing, knowing it was Big Dre, but he said that because, I, I don't know what his relationship with Big Dre was at that time or whatever, he knowingly for a fact knew that his his nephew was dead, so he blamed it on his nephew as not to incriminate anyone else. Does that make sense? Does that make a lick of sense? No? Does it? Tell me if I'm tripping. Somebody said T.I. said the same thing. What are you talking about? Oh no no. No, Jody said no, no. I don't I'm not acting like y'all are dumb, but this is why I'm asking a question because my question could be thrown out the window. If he knew for a fact that Big Dre was dead this whole time, if he has to take a proffer that's gonna get him out of some other shit, why not just in the proffer just admit that Big Dre did the killing because other people in this investigation are saying it's Big Dre. I know we're saying it's 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 um, Orlando Anderson. Keefe D said it's Orlando Anderson, but everybody else outside of it, and also if you look at just physically and the physics of the matter, it would be more easier for Big Dre to do the shooting than Orlando Anderson. Now, again, if if that's what he did. And, and, and this is my Hail Mary here, right? This is a conspiracy theory. Maybe the the authorities realize that he's he was trying to wiggle out of this by blaming the death on a dead guy. They realized the dead guy, at least at the time, didn't do the killing. It was actually Big Dre who did the killing, which means... Or um, Keefe D lied during the proffer. And what happens when you lie during the proffer, everything you said during the proffer and also evidence that came from the proffer could be used against you. And possibly it went into these things, given corroborating evidence from other people. I don't know if that's a lot. Somebody said I'm chatting. I might be. I might be. OK, um, two more things. Two more things on this. Two more things on this. OK. This was the fucking hilarious. I, I couldn't even believe this was a thing. Chat, listen to this. I feel like Big Dre, he shot Tupac. All right, here. Because right. you did make a confession some years ago, man. Here we go, here we go. Remember, he's always said Orlando Anderson. Listen to this. How you feel hey, about dog. the people that feel like Big Dre, he shot Tupac? Because you did make a confession some years ago, man, and you said that you gave the gun to Big Dre. But he got cold feet, so Orlando, he ended up snatching the gun and shooting Tupac. He, he, oh, no, no, no. Was Big Dre like that? Was he capable of doing that? Was he a shooter? Them dudes was kids, man. Both of them dudes was kids back then. They was kids, dude. Them dudes was kids. Dre, Dre was an all-CIO basketball player, dude. You know what I'm saying? 
Pete Trey was an all CIO basketball player. You know what I'm saying? Had a nice shot, all that shit. Dunking and all that shit. Them dudes was kids. Dre was an athlete. Them dudes was athletes, dude. You know? He wasn't about that, you know? Yeah. Back then, Dre was a... Yeah. So he imported the trigger. Man. We already discussed that. We already discussed that. Would you trying to get me in jail again? The irony, huh? So, clearly, he's not trying to go back on his word. Somebody said, play the Orlando answer interview in 1997. Okay, I'll look that up too. Okay, chat, we're not spending all night on this. I'm, I'm just getting to some quick points to kind of like, you know, it's kind of going to challenge uh, um, uh, it's going to challenge conventional thought because the, I do think there's some really there's some twists and turns to this shit. Okay, let me see. All right, maybe this is it. All right, give me one second. All right, before right, so before I do that, uh, there was another thing I wanted to show y'all. I took notes. So I ain't gonna lie to you. Okay, in the self snitching dialogue, listen to this chat. Listen to this. What about the people that feel like Big Dre? He shot Tupac. Oh no, no, because you did make a no, no. Okay, I like that already. Oh, play that already. Hold on. Okay. Here we go. To the rumor that's been going around, man, that you might be getting arrested for the murder of Tupac. Any last words? Dude, I'm a man. I understand all through it all, dog. Whatever the law got to offer me, I'm going to come through it, you know what I'm saying? I'm staying tall through it all, though. Oh, really? They do come arrest me, what the fuck I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm staying through it all. The Lord, the Lord got me, homie. God got me, homie. That's why I'm still here and everything, dude. You know, the Lord got me. And I'm not worried about that or nothing like that. What I'm going to do. If they do come arrest me, all I'm going to do is just uh, try to do the best how to hire me some good attorneys and get up out, try to get up out the shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, they would have never found out everything. All that shit was a big cross. You know what I'm saying? It crossed me. All he did was he was in there for money gang, dude. You know what I'm saying? But nobody supposed to ever find out that bullshit and dude was in there for money gang. Hmm. And I'm done with that. Okay. So another thing, and, and I, I neglected to kind of pay attention to this or point this out to y'all when we were going over the grand jury thing. Okay, remember, Keefe D in his, like, you know, um, proffer and elsewise, he said Orlando Anderson did the shooting. But there's another person who, uh, here we go. Um, it says a Southside Crip affiliate testified that it was Smith. So there's a Southside gang affiliate who's clearly a cooperant or clearly down to testify that it was Smith, not Orlando Anderson, that killed Shakur. So in, in, you know, kind of bringing back that dialogue, um, it was the guy on the left. So it was him that did the shoot, not him. Keefe D, who's at the top, says it was his cousin or his, his nephew, not this guy. He said this guy had cold feet. But according to the witness that testified in this new grand jury indictment, it's, uh, um, it says... Um, when Keefe D passed the firearm to Orlando, Orlando didn't have a clear shot. Who could have that information that would still be alive to testify? Keep in mind, everybody in the car but Keefe D is deceased. Keefe D didn't testify at his own grand jury, so it had to be word in the streets from other people associated with Southside Crips. So they're saying that, oh, Orlando didn't have a clear shot, um, big Dre 6'6", six, six. at times he's 370 to 400 pounds, he's big. You're not going to be able to lean over a big guy like that and get, I mean, my time of knowing things doing, you're not going to reach over him because the shells would have been popping all in Big Dre's face and all kind of stuff. He can't bend down or anything. He's too big. When asked if Smith is a shooter, the gang affiliate told the grand jury he did the shooting. By the way, this is con contradicting what Keefe D has said. What Keefe D said in that proffer, Keefe D said it was Orlando Anderson. Keefe D said subsequently, or hinted to subsequently, that it was Orlando Anderson, but somebody else is saying it was 
Big Dre. Now, again, the ramifications of that, if Keefe D knowingly lied, right, and whether he was lying to, to blame the murder on somebody already dead or whatever the case is, that proffer is now null and void. Okay, cool. So I wanted to play out that, and then I think there was, like, one more thing about this. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, interestingly enough, somebody sent me this, too. So in 2002, right after the murder of Tupac, um, oh my God, am I, ah, shit, I gotta go to, uh, let me see, Microsoft Edge, that's what it is, okay, bet. so I gotta paste this link here, and then I gotta show it on here, and the reason why, I'm gonna bring up a news article from the LA Times, the day after Tupac dies, okay, so the day after Tupac dies, let me go here, now. Nah, here, the day after Tupac dies, the LA Times run this article and it says, Who killed Tupac? Okay. And um, if you, again, remember, look at the date for this. It says September 6, 2000. Well, actually, well, actually, this wasn't the day after Tupac died. Sorry. Fuck it up. This is 2002. This is 2002. But it's an interesting article because the narrative has changed over time. So Tupac died in, was it, 96? And then six years later, they had like a whole different situation of what they thought it was. Okay. Um, the city neon light, blah, blah, blah. The man in the passenger seat was instantly recognizable. Okay, they're talking about Tupac right here. Um, the black, the, well, the BMW 750 sedan with rap magnet, um, Shug Knight, um, at the wheel was leading a procession of luxury vehicles past the MGM Grand Hotel and Caesar Palace on their way to a hot new night nightclub. It was after 11 on a Saturday night, September 7th. Okay, September 7th, my bad. September 7th, 1996, a caravan paused at a crowded intersection a block from the strip. Shakur flirted with a car full of women, unaware that a white Cadillac had quietly pulled up beside him. A hand emerged from the Cadillac and it was a semi-automatic pistol aimed straight at Shakur. Many of the rappers' lyrics seem to foretell this moment. The fast life ain't everything they told you. He, he sang about in his early hit, Soldier Story. Never get much older following the tracks of a soldier. Six years later, the killings, killing of a world-famous rap star still officially remain unsolved. Las Vegas police have never made an arrest. Speculations and wild theories continue to flourish in the music media among Shakur followers. One is that Knight, Shug Knight, the owner of Shakur's label arranged a killing so he could exploit the rapper's martyrdom commercially. Another persistent legend is that Shakur faked his own death to escape pressures of stardom. Obviously, both are clearly false. Um, a year-long investigation by the Times reconstructed the crime and the events leading up to it. Evidence gathered by the paper indicates the shooting was carried out by a Compton gang called the Southside Crips. So they got that right. To, the, to avenge the beating of one of its members by Shakur a few hours earlier. They got that right. That's Orlando Anderson. Orlando Anderson, the crip whom Shakur had attacked, fired the fatal shots. That was their, their theory. Las Vegas police discounted Anderson as a suspect and interviewed him only once, briefly. Wow, really? He was later killed in an unrelated gang shooting. The murder weapon was supplied by New York rapper Notorious B.I.G., which this is crazy who agreed to pay the Crips a million dollars for killing Shakur. By the way, this was printed in the LA Times. So if you wonder why, like, you know, East Coast, West Coast, like, tensions brew up, LA Times is basically printing that Notorious B.I.G. put a million dollars on Shakur's head and he got killed. Um, Notorious B.I.G. and Shakur was feuding for a few years, exchanging insults on records, uh, on recordings at award shows. And concerts, Big was gunned down six months later in Los Angeles. That killing also remains unsolved. Uh, before they died, Notorious B.I.G. and Anderson denied any role in Shakur's death. This account of what they and others did that night is based on police affidavits, court documents, and uh, as well as interviews with investigators, witnesses to the crime, and members of the Southside Crips who have never before discussed the killing outside the gang. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, the rest of this is, is not much of anything. Cool. Yeah, yeah, this is about the fight. Oh, okay, okay. Here we go. Plan of retaliation. A bruised, a bruising and shaken Anderson gets uh gathers himself off the floor, and dozens of star, uh, startled onlookers, MGM security guards, and Las Vegas police try to persuade him to file a complaint against his assailants, but he declined. He heads to the strip and cross over a pedestrian bridge to Excalibur Hotel, where he had checked in with his girlfriend. News of the beating swept through the gang underground before he reaches room. Uh, his page was beeping with calls from Crip cohorts. 
according to what he later told associates. He phoned his, damn, this was like pager time? Oh, shit. Forgot how long that was. He phoned his comrades and set up a meeting at Treasure Island Hotel. He changed his clothes and hopped in a taxi before heading to the hotel with a huge neon skull and crossbones out front. Um, they, uh, Treasure Island had served as a, as a Crips headquarters during the boxing matches for years. The gang would rent a fleet of luxury vehicles, ride across the desert in a caravan, hand in their keys to valets, and head to block of rooms booked under fake names. Drug trafficking paid for this all. The ritual had little to do with boxing, many gang members, blah, blah, blah. By the time he reached, blah, blah, more than a dozen gangsters were holed up in a crip reserve rooms. Marijuana, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. According to who was present, the Crips decided to shoot Shakur after a performance at a at Club 622. The, the plan was to station two vehicles of armed Crips outside the night spot and lie in wait. The gang put a call into the Crips hideout in Las Vegas, a rented house used to stash drugs and firearms and shelter gang members on a run from crimes committed in L.A. They told a man there to bring some backup weapons over to the hotel soon. Um, OK, cool. Uh, for the Crips, the beating of blah, 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 was egregious. The still a Crips thought, why not make a little money while they were at it? They decided to ask Shakur's biggest enemy to pay for the hit. Huh. The gang uh, uh, arranged a rendezvous with um, Notorious B.I.G., the Brooklyn rapper whose real name was Christopher Wallace, who hated Shakur and had been feuding with him for more than a year. Once tight friends, the entertainers are now... Um, ridicule each other events and in interviews and on recordings and one song hit him up Shakur bragged about having sex with Wallace's wife and vowed to kill him the threats between the rappers and labels blah, 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 blah. okay come on let's keep it going fearing for his safety a friend of Wallace arranged for the Crips to supply bodyguards for the rapper whenever he traveled west over the years the gang was paid to provide security for Wallace at uh, casinos oh, shit fuck at casinos uh, wait Um, yeah, for casinos and clubs, blah, blah, he gave them access to star groupies and inner sanctum of the music business. He began flashing Crip signs and was calling out the homies. Yo, wait, so Biggie was claiming Crip, like Loki, or like kind of throwing up these signs? On September 7th, the Crip decided to take him up on the offer. They sent an emissary to the penthouse suite of uh, MGM, where Wallace was booked under a false name. In Vegas to party, he didn't attend the fight, but he had quickly learned about Shakur's shuff, uh, scuffle with Anderson. He gathered a, a handful of thugs and East Coast rap associates to hear what the Crips had to say. According to who, who was present, the Crips envoy explained that the gang was prepared to kill Shakur, but at least ex but expected to collect a million dollars for his efforts. Wallace agreed on one condition, the witness said. He pulled out a loaded 40 caliber Glock pistol and placed it on the table in front of him. He didn't want he didn't just want Shakur dead. He wanted the satisfaction of knowing the fatal bullet came from his gun. Um on, it says, okay, damn. Knight was leading a caravan of, of at least five death row cars headed to Club 62. They turned their heads as they perceived blah blah blah. So by the way, this is a whole recount of what was going on. And, you know, at least this is what the L.A. Times printed in 2002, but they're blaming the entire murder on Biggie paying or putting up that million dollar bounty. Right. Uh, moments later, they took they went down to the Treasure Island lobby. They walked down to the valet area, hovering in the hotel, blah, blah. blah. Uh, OK, he rode solar with the AK-47 style rifle lying across the front seat. What was this? Oh, so I guess it was two cars. Yeah, it was two cars. The traffic in front of Treasure Island was bumper to bumper. Cars honked, billboards flashed, neon lit, uh, lighted fountains tricked nearby. Um, the the driver of the white Cadillac lighted a cigarette. Behind him sat Anderson. Um, the crip in the front passenger seat handed Anderson the loaded Glock from Notorious B.I.G. The four men discussed staking out the club where he would perform. After waiting on a stoplight between Caesars Palace and Barbary Coast Hotel, the Cadillacs turned on Flamingo and headed towards Club 662. As they passed the Bally's Hotel on the right, the driver saw the caravan of luxury vehicles. Um, the vehicles packed with mob pyrus and death row employees were stopped at a red light across the Maxim Hotel. The crosswalk was filled with te uh, tourists. Leading the envoy was Knight's black BMW. Shakur was in the passenger seat. They were alone in the car and unarmed. The Crips couldn't believe their luck. They decided to chuck their plan and strike immediately. The Cadillac raced up a convoy and pulled up beside the BMW. Shakur didn't notice. He was flirting with the car uh, full of women in the lane to his left. So if we go back to it, 
the car pulls up allegedly. Oh shit! I can't show you that. Can I? Uh, no, wait. What the fuck? Ooh. What the fuck am I doing? That's display capture. I'm tripping. No, that's not it. That's not it either. Oh, here we go. All right. Okay. So this car pulls up to another car over here. So this car pulls up to another car over here. Where they're saying Tupac, who's in the right side of this other car who would be right here he's looking to his left because he's flirting with bitches ain't it always women bro it's always women okay cool all right let, let, let's get back to that that article by the way i'm reading this article because somebody brought it to my attention but they had a lot of interesting details that a lot of people did not believe were either true at the time or just didn't know anyway it, it matches with a lot of what police is saying now see i saw four black um, four black men rolling a white Cadillac says Atlanta rapper EDI uh, mean who was already in the vehicle directly behind Shakur. I saw a gun come from the back seat through the drive uh, out through the driver's front window. Oh, he said a gun came from the back seat through the driver's front window. That's interesting because you got to remember, let's go back to shit. Let's go back to this. Remember what the, the, the person, the grand jury said? This nigga right here, like, this dude right here is like 400 pounds. He's super fat. So to put the gun over his fucking belly, this nigga is looking like fucking DJ Khaled in the back. So to put the gun over his belly and shoot right at somebody over him is pretty hard. But it's probably easier to point the gun through, like, if you're on the back seat where this guy is, right, Orlando Anderson, you point the gun, right? So you would be, like, right here. You point the gun through here. Which means you would probably be shooting behind your man's head or some shit like that. Okay. But at least it, it deals with the idea of Big Dre was just too fat so you couldn't shoot across from him. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Let's go back to this article. By the way, I'm not, again, I have about like five minutes on this. I'm getting off this. Don't worry. Okay. Cool. No, my bad. What the fuck? Cool. Then let's keep reading. The bullets flew, shattering the um, windows of the B uh, BMW. Shakur tried to duck into the rear for the cover. We've heard that before. Uh, but four rounds hit him. Damn. Shredding his chest. Blood was everywhere. We heard shots. We looked to the right of us. N um, Knight said, well, Knight against Tupac. Uh, well, no, sure Knight, I mean. Tupac was trying to get in the back seat, and I grabbed him and I pulled him down. The gunshots kept coming. One hit my head. Yeah, two, remember, remember Keefe D said he thought he saw a bullet go into Shug Knight's head. Does that make sense? In the chaos, neither Knight nor Mean could make out who had fired. The driver of the yellow Cadillac had just uh, just behind the assailants never got a chance to fire his AK-47. Happened so quick, it took about three or four seconds. Okay. Knight had made a U-turn. Da, 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 squealing around. Da, da, da. Okay. Uh, somebody had asked why, the, why Tupac's rims, the rims on the vehicle that was carrying Tupac, why it was, like, fucked up, Right? This is what answers it. Remember, so the, the Cadillac goes around the corner. Um, and then Knight made a U-turn and the bullet riddled vehicle squealing around the concrete median. Um, that's where, you know, it says the death row co convoy followed him back to the strip where he rammed his car onto a curb. So, like, he's probably panicking, like, and, and that's where the rim gets bent. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, I think one more, two more things about this that I thought was interesting. Here we go. First of all, this was very interesting today too. And it, and, and if you guys don't know, again, I, I assume that so many people have a lot of knowledge and really have a lot of vested interest into this whole Tupac thing. You probably love Tupac from way back. You maybe have been your favorite artist, so you've been paying attention. But for people who, who's new to the story, this is very important right here. Uh, let me go like this, and let me go like this. Why is my off-the-record thing playing? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, let's go here. Cool. Let's go there. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Cool. So Suge Knight was actually interviewed today. This is very important. DVD playing on the same power. Okay. So this is where this whole story is so bizarre, but it's also like it's the epitome of why this murder wasn't solved. If you ever wonder why Tupac's murder wasn't solved, this is going to answer it in a nutshell. It's street shit. It's literally just street shit, okay? Just for me to summarize, but you're going to realize. So Suge Knight, who was in the car, keep in mind, Suge Knight's in the car with Tupac, and Tupac gets all them bullets. Tupac dies. He gets grazed in the head. He could have died too, right? At this time, Keefe D probably wanted to kill him too. And according to what Keefe D even said by his own admission, when he allegedly talked to the big fish, you know who I'm talking about, the person said, yo, he he wanted Suge and Tupac dead. Do you get what I mean? That's what Keefe D said. Now, what does that mean? It means that Keefe D had no problem with Suge Knight dying in that car. He probably wanted Suge Knight to die as well, both, right? Now, here's the thing. Keefe D now gets arrested. Now, granted, Suge Knight's been in jail for running over somebody with a car for a while, but hear what Suge Knight says about Keefe D, and this is going to bring up the exact reason why this murder was on Saul for 27 years. Remember, everybody already said, if there was one person that would know who shot Tupac, it would definitely be the other person in the car with Tupac, Suge Knight, or the people in the car that did the shooting, right? Now, Keefe D came out to claim he was in the car, so that's why people think it's that car, but Suge Knight himself has never really given any qualitative answer on what the fuck happened. Hear how he talks today. I'm talking about today. They called him in prison. They'll say, hey, what are your reaction to Keefe D being arrested for Tupac's death? You were in the car. They were trying to kill you too. Listen to what he says. I want a football team. And whatever the circumstances, if he had an involvement with anything, if he didn't have any involvement with anything, I still, who want to see? I wouldn't wish somebody to go to prison on my worst enemy. The DA says that Keefe D was in the car with his nephew and that presumably his nephew, according to the DA, is the one that shot Tupac and that it was done with the full knowledge of Keefe. Um, do they have it right? It was only two people in the car. And Pac not going to tell the story. I ain't going to tell the story, but I tell you this. And it's, I, I never had nothing bad to say about uh, uh, Orlando because <laughs> number one. Remember, Orlando is the killer. Allegedly, he says he doesn't have any bad things to say about Orlando. He wasn't a shooter. Number two. He came to my hearing and told to let me go and told the truth. They still didn't let me go. If you are called to testify in this case? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. Why not? Yeah, I wouldn't be. Why not? Well, number one, okay, because I'm not going to get on the stand and testify on somebody for what? They seem to be saying that Orlando was the shooter and Keefe was in on it that he had full knowledge of what was going down and it was revenge for orlando getting beaten up by tupac and his team uh, at the mgm after the tyson fight is that correct no then who shot tupac it wasn't anderson so that's all i got to say about that part to summarize you are saying orlando was not the shooter although you won't say who the shooter was you are not saying whether Keefe was involved in any way in the shooting. Um, and you are saying that if you're called to testify by either side, you will not comply. You will not testify. Do I have that right? thousand percent. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't testify. None of that. Now, chat, this is why Tupac's murder went unsolved for 27 years you heard what you heard what shook said and to the simple mind they're gonna say well this sounds like a man who may have set up the killing himself like he don't seem like he give a fuck about tupac's murder being solved now here's a few things that you have to remember right if you wanted your artist to be killed because maybe you know obviously you're gonna own all this shit and you're gonna be able to exploit it 
you probably wouldn't want to be next to him, especially if you're big and fat and big as hell and tall as hell when bullets are flying. Like, that's pretty much kind of... Like, that makes sense, right? Like, you don't want to be next to the nigga. Like, you want to make sure he's next to somebody else, not you. So, already that doesn't make sense, right? Like, why would you have the attempt on his life when you're right next to him and a bullet grazes your, grazes your head? That doesn't sound like a smart person. Um, Then you start asking other questions. Well, if you didn't plan the murder, d d d why aren't you helping? Don't you care about Tupac? Well, it's clearly he cared about Tupac. If you heard anybody in the aftermath talk about what happened when Tupac was shot, Suge was very worried about Tupac. Suge was expressing deep concern. And even one person even said, if that was acting, he's the best actor in the world. Suge genuinely did care about Tupac. Now, again, it's going to go back to why this whole situation took 27 years to, to solve okay i'm gonna enter these two things let me bring up microsoft paint one more time this is how we're gonna get our shit done you feel me listen ah uh, paint chat don't you like me when, uh, love me when i do shit like this all right here we go microsoft paint let's get this bitch going on right uh, where's paint come on paint bang right here. um okay cool Cool. All right, Chad. Remember, we're going to create one lane. Okay, two lane. Okay, let me zoom this bitch out, Chad. I'm going to make sure I get a good understanding of what the fuck we're talking about. And this is going to show you exactly why. And this is why, by the way, I think this is going to bleed a little bit into the Biggie situation. Because remember, the Biggie situation is unsolved. This pretty much is solved for the Tupac situation now. But it took 27 years. Okay, cool. So let me just draw a car. Uh, no, let me just, what is this? No, uh, let me do a rectangle. So this is a car. And then this is another car. Okay. So in uh, in this car over here, in this car, we have Shug. Make sure it's a little proportionate. And we got Tupac. So we got Shug and Tupac, right? And in this car, we got Driver, Keefe D, Big Dre. Hold on. I was going to make I was make his circle a little bit more <laughs> circular. You know, you fat. Shout out to the fat niggas, man. Come on, we got to hold it down. And then we got Orlando Anderson right here, right? Okay, cool. Perfect. So these two cars are right next to each other. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm drawing this. You heard what you heard what Suge just said. Clearly, Suge knows who shot at them. At this point, all signs actually point to Keefe D. Keefe D's been self-stitching. It's not like he just made this up. What Keefe D's been saying is actually true. But why ain't Suge cooperating? Remember, this is Pac right here. Um, he's either killed. So Pac is either killed by this guy who shot through this window here or this guy who shoots through this window here. Or, or this guy who leans over here out the window and shoots up here. Okay, so one of these trajectories is how Pac, which is right here, he dies. Okay, Pac is right here. All right, now, check this out. The reason why you have Shug saying that bullshit is, and this is what I'm saying, this situation is the epitome of street shit is because remember death row right which basically aligns with a bunch of mob pyrus starts bullying the east coast niggas they go to the source awards they're getting into it with wu-tang and also bad boy and basically they start setting it off on bad boy calling them bitches all type of shit bad boy is shook of these West Coast niggas. You get you get Diddy who says, fuck, we're, all, we're good on the East Coast, but we got to go to the West. They start making calls based on some mutual whatever, whatever. Diddy kind of knew like some Southside Crips with some other shit and also one of his other guys knew some shit. That's how Diddy um, connects with these Southside Crips. Now, again, there's some neighborhood shit among them, but... A lot of the issues, at least during that time, comes from 
these these Southside Crips are in alignment with Diddy, who who um Pac and these Mob Pyrus are basically going against. So Diddy basically just tagged in these Southside Crips, right? But the reason why I'm saying this is ultimate street shit is because after Pac dies, and this is why you hear Suge talking like this, Pac dead, Pac's dead. When Pac is dead, Suge gets picked up, okay? Suge was on parole. No, not parole. He was on probation, okay? Suge apparently pulled out a gun at some label shit on two niggas, like, Pulled the gun. I think he pistol whipped them. Suge was doing Suge. Okay. Police got involved. He got put on probation. Which means, you know, you know the rules of probation. You can't do drugs. You can't do this. You can't beat nobody else's ass. You can't shoot no other niggas. Now, he was a victim in the shooting. But because, remember, Suge is right here. This is Suge. Now, let me put a little arrow. Now, because, yes, he was a shooting in this case. And Pac is dead. But his probation picks him up because of Rewind the Night. He was in that melee, that fracas, where, remember when Tupac jumps out on Orlando Anderson, the nigga in this seat right here, early on and started stomping him out in the, in the casino, right? The reason why this whole shooting even happened, when he does that, a bunch of other Ma Paru niggas, like, yo, Tupac's the artist. If he, Tupac's setting it off, remember Tupac's setting it off for a gang beef. That Tupac's not even in the gang, but he set it off because some gang shit happened where, where where a nigga chain got snatched or some shit like that. So Tupac, he's just setting it off. So the other niggas is riding with Tupac, and Suge Knight hops in there and starts stomping a nigga out. Let me let me pull that video up. So there is a video you'll see of Suge Knight, and I'm gonna tell you why all of this is relevant. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm gonna tell you why all this is relevant. Okay, there's a video. Let's go back to the jumping. The shit that caused all this. YouTube. Um, Tupac jump Orlando Anderson. Okay. This is okay, this is the security footage, right? Okay, there's a lot. There's a lot to, to, to decode here. There's a lot to decode here. Let's see if we can find it. Okay. You, you see Tupac and them, they're they're walking. They're walking with a purpose. That's Pac right there. You hold on. You you, you see Shook? I bet he's beeline to somebody. Look, you see Pac again? Here we go. You can tell. Yo, he's on one. Pac is on one. First of all, any nigga who wearing a button up with like that one button like down. Oh nah, he's on timing. I bet. Here we go. It's about to happen. Actually, I think it's happening right now. Okay. Let me see. I, I don't know if I could get like a clear footage. I think there's another footage I could get. It's a little bit clearer. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Here we go. No, no. Here we go. Bingo. Here we go. Okay. So cool. You're gonna see right here. They start jumping in. Okay. Okay. Now, it's, it's hard to tell who's who because this is some old ass video. Some old school video shit. But niggas is getting their ass beat. Okay. Okay. I don't even know if I could pinpoint the, the, the point where it happens. Okay. Anyway, great. Here's the point, right? Apparently, Suge gets in there and Suge is fucking stomping this nigga out with his loafers too. Okay. Now, remember when Tupac gets killed is the biggest thing on earth. So, Suge's probation. Remember, he was on probation, even though he was a victim in the car with Tupac. His probation starts looking into what's being put all over national TV. That what preempted maybe the shooting was this altercation 
that Death Row was in with Tupac leading, but Suge Knight also was kicking a nigga and jumping him, Orlando Anderson. So here's what happened. They wanted to violate the probation, right? They wanted to violate the probation of Suge Knight. And this is why I said this whole murder was street shit. This is why it never got solved. Remember, Pac is dead now. Now they're trying to take Suge Knight to jail for his involvement in the fight earlier that night. So now we got to go to a probation hearing. He figures the only way I stay out of jail because I'm caught in 4K. Actually, it's not 4K. This is VHS, right? Caught on VHS, stomping out this guy, which is against the terms of my probation. They're going to send me to jail. This is the craziest street shit happens. Suge Knight pays Orlando Anderson to testify in his case after he killed Tupac. He, he pays him, I think, like 60000 He pays the nigga to testify that Suge never kicked him at all. Because, like, you know, the, the prosecutor is coming through like, yo, we got Suge on tape jumping this dude. The dude, like, so, so, so Suge's lawyers say, only way for us to get out of this, let's have the dude say, you weren't kicking nobody, you were breaking up the fight. So the guy who killed Tupac gets a check from the guy, by the way, remember, Suge gets grazed in his head too. Suge gives this nigga a check of $60,000 to basically get on the stand and say, Suge never, Suge never, never kicked me at all, he was breaking up the fight. Now, granted, it didn't work. It didn't work at all because um, Suge still went to jail, but it showed the pretty much the reason why this thing hasn't been solved. It's been a head nod and a understanding that what went on that night was street shit. And yes, there was wars that went on behind it, but life goes on and the streets is the streets. And what does that mean? Yo, even though you want to kill that nigga, you don't fuck with him like that. Shit, you rather pay that nigga now that he helped keep you out of jail, even if he didn't. But that was the point. So the reason why, the reason why um you hear Suge talking so complimentary about this guy, he paid this guy later on to testify on the stand that Tupac didn't do nothing. No, no, that mean that Suge didn't do anything. And that you could understand that's some complete street shit at that point. Because there had to be an understanding between Keithy D and Shug. And that would have probably went down to Orlando Anderson and Shug. The money got transferred. Apparently there were some lawyers involved. But Orlando Anderson testified after killing Tupac that Shug did not do nothing to him. So he tried to help keep Shug out of jail after he put Tupac in the ground. Do you understand why this shit never got solved? Like, that's like the biggest... Like, if you were ever wondering, like, why did it really take so long? Yeah, these motherfuckers were all in gangs. They're in L.A. They're they're kind of killing each other constantly. But they're playing like a weird game where I think there's some type of rules and morals. So, you know, like these days, you snitch on your, like, I mean, these guys said they don't snitch. But you snitch on the guy who is hurting you. Then, Suge never told on, on Orlando. And Orlando returned the favor and didn't tell on Suge. That's crazy. That is crazy. And this year, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you understood what I, what I just said. This here explains the fact and the reality of why this case was never solved. The people who were involved had a understanding even on opposite sides. So Suge knew who shot, who did the, the killing. Them niggas knew that Suge wasn't going to tell. Them niggas in turn tried not to put Suge in jail. And somehow I could imagine some agreement was made to leave each other the fuck alone and do business. And Tupac was just honestly a casualty of war. All right. Um, I hope you understood that, but I know you guys are smart, so you guys definitely either knew it before or um, understood it then. And um, I think that was the only thing I had on that. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. All right, bet. 
Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. So that was that was it. Um, the the next thing that I kind of want to get into. What should I happen to? By the way, interestingly enough, while while people getting arrested, you know who's living their best life? You know who's living their best life while while niggas is getting arrested? So Diddy gets pulled over. I think he's in like a golf. He's on a golf cart or something like this. I don't think this is Star Island. So if you guys don't know, so Diddy lives on like this exclusive place, Diddy Star Island. So he lives. Uh, let me see if I can show Star Island. So Star Island is this man-made island that is in um the Miami area, right? Well, really Miami, okay. Um, it's like a plot of land that is separated by all the way down here. And then there's like sections it cuts like a pizza almost. Um, the price tag for some of these cribs are usually over like 30, $40 million. It's, it's very exclusive. By the way, this is not a real Island. So to speak, it's actually man-made and apparently it was made by the U S military way back in a day. But these days, you know, obviously as as Miami is just, you know, obviously was Vice City and it became like the place of luxury and whatever, whatever. It's just a bunch of like really billionaires and exclusive people that live here. Now, Diddy lives uh, um, like, for example, you can see, by the way, every every home in Star Island is a waterfront. So, it, again, it's, it's cut down the middle and it's sliced like a pizza. So everybody has like a ocean view. Right. Um, look, it says. One of them was going for $65 million. You could tell how much it is. By the way, this is another view of it, right? So it's kind of like a, it's like a, almost like a circular path in a sense um, in terms of a road. And then there is, how do you get off, get off of it? I think, yeah, right here. Yeah. So to get off of it, to go to like Brickle or something like that, you, you get off on this road. Cool. And I think like it's, I think it's gated too. So you can, not anybody and anybody could drive there. There's another aerial view right here. So you see the houses and you go right here or whatever. So it's, it's really man-made, but it's really dope. Anyway, um, Diddy lives there. Uh, it's one of those places where the, the, the rich and the privileged do whatever the fuck they want. I do know this video that I'm playing from Diddy is in Miami. I don't know if this is Star Island because I don't think nothing like this looks like an apartment complex. I don't think this is Star Island regardless. Diddy's one of the people who just owns so much real estate. Everybody treats Diddy different. So this is the cop that pulls him over. I think he's in a golf cart. I don't think this is a car. He gets pulled over by for blasting his music loudly in the streets of Miami. And listen to how the cop treats him. Thank you. Yeah, good. You hear the new album? Huh? You hear the new album, the love album? I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. And when you hear it, I want you to blast that shit as loud as you can. All right. Because you can do that. The love album. The love album. I'll blast it at home. Though. Okay, I'll cool. Home. All right, thank you for your service. I need a dick. Oh, it's, it's fucking Friday. <laughs> what did you think he was going to get? <laughs> but I'm love. I'm love, y'all. But don't get love fucked up. Don't get that shit fucked up, baby. Don't get that shit fucked up. Yeah. Get that shit fucked up. They want to fuck with you for having them peanut butter seats. Y'all know what it is out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, oh, we always going to be able to relate, baby. They going to pull you over. No matter how much money I got, they going to pull me over. I'm trying to just get to my man. And this is my city. He know damn well this is my city. You know what I'm the king of New York, LA, and Miami. I mean, damn. You know, money buys a lot. Now, I'm going to be honest, I, I do think, you know, like this happens a lot. I'm pretty sure they pulled him over and asked him very nicely, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Love. We didn't know it was you were pulling over. But, hey, we did get some reports about your music being too loud. Like, you know, obviously, we got to come check it out. We didn't know it was you. Apologies for even coming out here. But, you know, um, you know, if you if you if you wouldn't mind, like even turn it down a little bit. Or at least wait till you like get back on your exclusive island that you could bump your tunes. That's how the cop probably talked to him, right? Like, you know, if it was you or me, like the cop is fucking giving us a fucking full Nelson choke, grabbing us out the vehicle, 
wondering why you don't got a seatbelt on in a golf cart, putting this knee on your neck, sicking the canine on you, like fucking, like like shoving this fucking taser up your asshole, like, you know what I mean, giving you a prostate. Listen, you'd be getting the works, me too. But this is Diddy, and shit works a little bit different in Diddy land. But when Diddy's driving off, he did say, man, tell that nigga eat a dick. I'm pretty sure they're going to, they're going to talk to him a little bit, but it is Diddy, man. This is Diddy. It's Diddy, bro. It's Diddy. I'm sorry. It's Diddy, bro. It's Diddy. And this is why, you know, I've seen people like, yo, man. Yo, damn, Keefy D getting locked up, man. Yo, I know this nigga. I know Diddy's panicking. For what? What are you talking about? Why would Diddy be panicking? You know what I mean? Diddy could buy the cops. Keefy D was broke. And by the way, he wasn't always broke. You know, I actually looked into the history of Keefy D. That nigga used to have a lot of money. He used to have a lot of money through um selling drugs. And apparently, them killing Tupac blew that operation up. That nigga said, the moment when Pac died, the next day, their gang, and I think him, was in the, the newspaper the next day because it was rumors that that gang may have did it. And he said his connect, which was some Colombian nigga, said, peace out. He said he ain't seen that nigga since. Which that makes sense. Like, yo, if I'm supplying you with a bunch of kilos of coke and you're now in a newspaper for allegedly killing the most famous rapper on earth, the fuck am I still giving? Like, that's just asking for me to get locked up. But anyway, um, apparently Keefe used to get a lot of money. And I was watching an interview today where he said at a point he was getting more money than Diddy until the Pac thing happened and, you know, they couldn't sell drugs no more while Diddy was still going for the music business. All right. Cool. Uh, we still got 